Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today I'm updating my BS3 introduction to what you can currently do in Star Citizen. This is meant as a whistle stop tour of what you can get up to at the moment with a $50 game package, with a few tips chucked in for how to get the most bang for your buck out of SC as it currently stands. If you're a new player considering getting in, just make sure you use a referral code at the point you create an account. It'll net you some extra starting cash which can really help you out in the beginning. If you have friends who play already, please use theirs, but if not, mine's up on screen. Also feel free to come over and say hi on Discord if you're looking for a group to help you out and have a laugh with, the link's just in the video description down below. So with that said, grab a cup of tea while I hit play on the intro, and then we'll get straight into it. If this is not the first video of mine that you've watched, chances are you might know that I love to start with a disclaimer or two. And today's no different, because while I'm going to spend the rest of the vid telling you what Star Citizen is, I'm going to take one minute to tell you what it's not. It is not a finished, polished game. Stating the obvious I know, but my current favourite saying is it goes without saying until you don't say it. While the vision of SC is for a wide-spanning MMO with a hundred or so star systems, many varied professions, territory control, etc, etc, that is not what you will experience in the current game. Right now we're somewhere between a playable alpha and a tech demo. New features are being added regularly, but with them come new bugs, crashes, and the potential for progress in terms of in-game bank balances and reputation to be wiped. If you're after a polished, stable, finished title, then right now you're spoilt for choice in the world of gaming but Star Citizen probably isn't the one for you just yet. However, with that disclaimer over, if you're still keen to see what you can do in the game while you wait for the game, then let's go. A bit further down in the vid, we'll look at different professions you can get into, where your gameplay might be a bit more self-directed, but a great place to start is with missions. They're a broad church, with some being issued by NPC organisations, while others come direct from a particular character, usually with the skeleton of a story arc behind them. In traditional MMO style, these will have you travelling to a variety of locations to kill ex-bad guys, blow up probe satellites, retrieve lost deliveries, or search for a missing person. If you're just taking your first steps into Starset, then missions can be a great place to start, since they'll have you travelling all around the system, but with a little bit of a helping hand from the game as it'll tell you where to go and what to do. Bounty hunting follows on nicely from missions, since bounties are in many ways just a type of mission. However, the key thing is that bounty hunting introduces reputation as an element. From the Bounty Hunter tab on your contract manager, you'll take a variety of missions. By completing a combination of certification missions from the Bounty Hunters Guild and contracts issued by the planet owning corporations of the Stanton system, you'll go work your way up in the ranks. Grinding up your reputation will unlock higher difficulties of missions, providing more challenging targets, flying stronger ships and with more escorts backing them up. Higher risk equals higher reward, so you'll get more credits rolling in for your trouble. Of course, if you want the ultimate challenge, you can always look to take on the PvP bounties. These will send you after criminal players who, if you're successful, will face a stretch in prison for their crimes when you shoot them down. Maybe not something for your first day, though. If you prefer your FPS combat to your ship pew pews, then mercenary bunker missions might offer you what you're after. These missions work in much the same way as bounties in that you build up reputation with the NPC orgs in order to unlock harder, higher paying ones. However, rather than ship combat, you'll head down into one of the security bunkers or caves dotted around the planets, and you'll engage enemies with the full gamut of assault rifles, submachine guns, shotguns, LMGs and sniper rifles. Full disclosure, the AI can be a bit brain dead at an FPS level currently, so even I look like a pro. Just be careful on the days when the servers are a little bit quieter though, as all of a sudden these bad guys go from stormtroopers to SAS operatives in a heartbeat. One of the great things about SC is that it's not all about combat. There's a range of industrial and economic gameplay as well, so while there are plenty of opportunities to blow things up with lasers, you can also blow up rocks with lasers. 
mining is much more of a self-directed profession, so you won't find any missions to show you where the rocks and gems are. You'll need to learn where different minerals are more likely to spawn and search for them using your scanners. While there isn't reputation in mining, there's still progression. It's just more tied to the type of mining you're doing. From hand mining with a multi-tool, to the rock mining buggy, to ship mining in the solo MISC prospector and multi-crew Argo mole. Whichever method you choose, you'll be challenged with a minigame, balancing the power of your mining laser with the charge level of the rock to get the stone to crack, allowing you to scoop up the valuable gems and minerals inside and sell them on for a bucket load of creds. Just don't forget that while you're out there cracking rocks, that you're in an open world with a server full of other players. So as much as you're going to need to learn to break rocks apart, you're also going to need to keep an eye on the sky watching out for anybody who might be up to no good. Another largely non-violent profession to consider though is trading, taking cargo from one side of the verse to the other, buying low and selling high. Much like with mining, the progression in trade is more to do with the ship that you're flying as opposed to any form of reputation. Bigger ship equals bigger cargo equals more space bucks. However, in the current state of the game, one big downside is that you need to put down your own cash in order to buy the goods in the first place. And until you hit a destination where you can sell up, that risk is going to be taken by your wallet. While this definitely adds to the white knuckle factor, something I'd really love to see in the not too distant future is cargo missions, allowing you to run trade for NPC orgs for a fee without risking your own cash. Right now, trading in Starset is not a get rich quick scheme. The brakes have been put on a bit compared to the old days by constricted inventories for buying and selling, and losing one load of merchandise to pilot error or pirates can set you back substantially. But it is a brilliant way to get around seeing the sights. I personally love keeping an eye on the commodity price alerts that will pop up in your general in-game, telling you which locations have higher than average supply or demand. And this has got me out to locations in the system which I probably wouldn't have gone to otherwise. If you are desperate to be a trader though, I'd highly recommend you check out a guy called Jack Axton, who has some of the most detailed vids on the subject and some truly insane landings. But what if you'd prefer to profit off the hard work of others? Well, look no further than a life of crime as a pirate. This might be your first vid on Star Citizen, so I'm not going to subject you to the history of the piracy versus griefing debate. The long and short of it to my mind is that if your main motivation is parting somebody else from their credits, then you're a pirate. Piracy is a difficult thing to do right. You have to study your prey, the miners and the traders, to know where they're likely to be and what they're going to be doing. Then you'll have to find a way to stop them in their tracks and make your demands, or to board and commandeer their ship if they're not quite getting the message. Right now at the time of recording, the key way to profit from piracy is to extort a certain amount of creds from an industrialist to secure their safe passage. You need to be smart about your negotiation tactics, know the value of what they have and what you can reasonably expect them to pay and then keep your word and let them go if they pay up. There might be no in-game rep for pirates, but if word gets around the community that you have a habit of taking credits and blowing people up anyway, after some time nobody's gonna pay you a dime. In this video I'm sticking to what you can do right now in-game, but I think it'd be wrong to not mention that in the next schedule patch, 318, there's a game changer for pirates. The cargo refactor will mean that cargo boxes containing a trader's goods can be picked up and moved off a ship onto another one allowing pirates to actually steal cargo and sell it on Ossium for the first time. A lot of people in the industrial world don't like piracy in SC, but for me personally I wouldn't be without it. The danger that comes from being in an open world is really what keeps things interesting, even if I'm doing something which is more traditionally PvE like mining. If there was no risk, I'd probably just get bored. Pirates being out there means for me that there are no pure PvE game loops. You always have to be on your toes thinking about what other players could do. And that's what really separates SC from some of the other space games I've played. In the words of Monty Python, and now for something completely different. Racing is about three things, speed, speed and more speed. Okay, so it's probably about more than that, but as any of the actual racers in my org will tell you, I'm not a particularly good racer, so maybe that's where I'm going wrong. Still, you get the general idea. Not only will you find dedicated racing tracks in the simulation mode of Star Citizen, Arena Commander, you'll also find a budding racing community in the live game itself. Players have been designing and sharing their own tracks using the terrain and buildings of the planets and moons to form courses to challenge each other over. One of these community designed courses, the Snake Pit, was deemed so good that CIG actually gave a refresh in the uh, 317 patch to include buildings and terrain to really cement this as a tracking game. 
And if you want to see some of the best races in action, just check out Black Maze or Azash's channels. And if you'd like to give some of this a go, we have a community race team over at Frontier, headed by our very own Go Fast Guy Tint. Dynamic events are special, time-limited missions that CRG put up hoping to get huge amounts of players involved with, and so far we've had four of them. We've had Xeno Threat, which involved combat and logistics guys working together to fight off some terrorists while also recovering supplies from a lost convoy. And Ninetales Lockdown was more for the traders, with a criminal faction enforcing a blockade of one of Stanton's space stations, creating a huge demand for medical supplies and some horrible war profiteering basically. Uh, Jump Town 2 brought players together in a somewhat less friendly manner. One of the drug labs started pumping out super valuable narcotics, but it was down to players to decide whether they wanted to share the spoils or fight over control of the location in kind of a king of the hill. And the most recent event, Siege of Orison, introduced the first FPS focused event. Taking place on one of the platforms of the Cloud City, players had to repel an assault by criminals who'd taken over the air defences, preventing us from using our ships until we'd regained control. The idea in the future is that certain situations in game will trigger these events, creating a mass movement of players to a location in the same way as world bosses do in other MMOs. However, for the time being, CIG will announce and rotate these events at different intervals. One of the really big appeals of Star Citizen is the intricately designed ships. I know that a lot of comments will probably come my way along the lines of you can spend X thousand dollars lol, but they're kind of missing my first point. All of the stuff outlined in this video is what you can do with a $50 game package. And that includes buying, with credits not dollars, nearly every release ship in the game. SC generally, extra emphasis needed here, works to a quarterly patch cycle. New ships that are added to the game tend to be released exclusively to the people who pledged hard currency for them in the one patch, and then made available in the in-game ship shops for AUEC in the next one. These will persist through patches as long as there's not a database wipe. Now recently we've had a few of those wipes as new text been added, and there is another one scheduled for the next patch 318, but the devs have said that they'll try and keep wipes to a minimum. And in-game ship purchases offer everybody a route to try out what can be some very expensive JPEGs, without spending any more than that initial amount. If you are considering getting something worth more than that in dollars, why not find a way to try it out in-game first, and check if it's really the one you want to buy. I tend to operate to a strict rule of not telling people how to spend their money. Maybe you earned it, maybe you found it, maybe your great grandma invented crayons. However you got it, it's yours to do with as you please. But if I were to offer one piece of advice, it's that people can get carried away pledging for ships in Star Citizen. Ask anybody how much they've spent and the chances are the common thread will be more than I thought I would. If I could go back and do it all again, I would definitely start with just a basic game pack and then do everything in this list before I spent another penny. And finally, we have community. Originally, I titled this section Community Events, and while that is a big part of it, I think it is more than that. Joining a player community or organisation is my absolute top tip for getting the most out of your pledge in Star Citizen. Something which has both sucked some of the joy out of other MMORPGs for me and meant that SE is far away my favourite game is that a lot of MMOs forget about the multiplayer part of the acronym. They're effectively single player experiences that you have alongside other people. Starset by design is a very multiplayer focused experience, so even just looking at the ships you'll find that all but the smallest will rely on you having another person on board to achieve their full potential. You need people to physically sit in turrets if you want to put out the full firepower of your ship, or to operate that mining laser, or to give you cover while you're out of your ship on foot picking up cargo. Communities and orgs are an integral part of the experience, and whatever avenue you're looking to go down in game, you'll find a group of people for you. That gives you friends to turn to for advice, help you out if you get downed, or just do some crazy stuff in the sandbox with. Personally, if I didn't have Frontier behind me, I'd probably have missed out on about 95% of the fun I've had in Starset. So that brings us to the end of the video, and there is almost certainly stuff that I've missed since I'm still finding it out myself, and in the not too distant future when 318 adds things like salvaging to the professions list, this video will ultimately become a bit outdated. And that really is the counter argument to the disclaimer in the beginning, you know, SC isn't finished, so stuff's always getting added and tweaked. If you enjoyed this, then please feel free to drop a like and sub and share it with a mate. Word of mouth is one of the very best ways to grow the channel and I greatly appreciate it. 
If you'd like to go a step further, then I do have a Patreon, but really just hanging out and watching the vids is already more than enough. If you're just getting into the game, then I do have a new player's guide, which I'll link in the video description down below as well. And in that, we do an episode on each one of these loops, so if you'd like much more detail on the how to do something, then you can head there if you're not already sick of me. But with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.